If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement and male advantage ebook, all links are in the bio. Most guys never cross that chasm. They never get across that bridge. Now let's look at the other side of the coin, okay? I'll use an example. Somebody like Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor in the early days was... He told a story, okay? I'll tell you the story. I'll make it easy and then I'll link it back. I like doing this. It brings things together. It creates a picture. McGregor was somewhere on holiday, somewhere warm. And he bumped into this guy who was a billionaire. McGregor starts chatting about money. And this guy's like... McGregor said he had a yacht tan. He was like golden brown, which you only get from being out on sea, which is the reflection of the sea. I get it. He said to McGregor, you fight as a like dentist. You only make money when you're pulling teeth. Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be talking about a concept called Crossing the Chasm. Now Crossing the Chasm was a book by a guy called Jeffrey A. Moore. And the idea behind it is any business, product, service, whatever it might be, has to kind of go through this leap, which is the crossing of the chasm. And he believes that every product starts with kind of the early adopters, then it goes into the trendsetters, the people who get on trends, and then there's a chasm, okay? And it starts again over here. It's like a jump, a leap. If you can make it across here, it believes you can be successful. Now, at this part here, this is when the mass public start to get involved and then it shoots off, it becomes a trend, you know, it goes viral, whatever it might be. I agree with him because I believe in order to achieve massive success, you have to reach the mainstream. But at the same time, I think this was written before subscriptions and retention growth methods. As an example, if my mainstream platform in a couple of, in around about a year or a year and a half, if when I release that, only a hundred people sign up every single month, on paper, it looks terrible and it won't pay the bills. It won't pay for the platform. But over the period of a year, that's 1,200 people that have then signed up all paying £3 per month. Again, doesn't sound like a lot, but then if you retain again for like five years, suddenly you're really onto something. And obviously, the compound effect is going to grow. It's not always going to be 100. But yeah, I don't think he took that into account. But it's a great book. I recommend reading it. It's very good. In It's called um, Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey A. Moore. But I've converted Crossing the Chasm into male life, okay? And I think it fits 10 times better than the business version. And now, Crossing the Chasm in a male life sense, I believe goes from being dependent down here, and then you have the chasm, to independent up here, okay? So men need to go from dependent to independent, now, that sounds obvious, and there's different scales to this. So, being able to drive for the first time, a lot of people may say, okay, that's going from dependent to independent. Well, yeah, it is. But in a male life sense, it doesn't really hit home too much, okay? It's not massively life-changing. It might land you a job as a delivery, like pizza delivery boy. It did me years ago. <laughs> um, but it's not going to kick your life off, okay, to another level. What I'm talking about when it comes to dependence is what people actually think is independence, okay? So I've said this to you guys many times before. We've got male maturity wrapped around our assholes. We have no idea what it really is. I had a problem with this when I was young. So I was working away on businesses and stuff. I was hustling. I was just wearing like fucking tank tops, just sat in shorts, just sat inside, just working away. And people would say, he needs to sort his life out. He needs to do something. And I was like, why? Because I'm not giving off the illusion that I'm successful, that I'm doing anything big. And there were other people that I knew were broke. They were in debt. They were two, three grand in debt. They'd taken loans, etc. But they had suits on. And they were going to a job each day. They were driving to that job. And it was costing them a bomb. But everybody was like, oh, he's an independent man. For me, I thought they were very dependent. They were dependent on their job to keep them alive. You know, they had houses that they couldn't afford, so they were dependent on having to pay the mortgage. You know, they were dependent on, they got the car on finance, so they're dependent on having to pay those bills for the car. And I just saw that, and I, I was still dependent on becoming successful. I wasn't there yet, I hadn't crossed that chasm, but we have male maturity really fucked up, and to value those other people way above me in terms of maturity and life progression... I didn't care, but I just thought it was weird. I, I saw that as an early concept, and I was like, there's something here to be explained. Now, 
let's say fast forward, let's say we have two guys that are 35, 40 years old, one has a decent job, 60,000 per year, has a car, okay, on finance, but he can afford it, earns a lot of money, has a house, like I said, is paying the mortgage, you know, still has 200,000 to pay off, but has a mortgage, and people go, oh, he's got his own home, he's got his own car, great job, 60,000 per year, has a girlfriend, all these other bills, etc. People say this is an independent man, he's strived for something in life. He hasn't crossed the chasm yet, in my personal opinion. I still think, personally, he's very dependent. Again, he's very dependent on his boss not firing him. He goes into work, he doesn't exactly run the show. There's somebody telling him what to do. It's not a nice life. If he loses that job, he loses the house and the car. He'd have to go and get another job immediately. Like, a lot of people that think they're independent and that they've crushed it in life, if they lost their job, COVID, for example, has shown this, and it's very sad. I'm not, you know, celebrating that fact. But a lot of people maybe lose their job and within two or three months they go from having shit tons of money and having a great life to suddenly being like, shit, I'm struggling. I'm going to have to sell a bunch of shit because they were literally living on the edge. They were living within a three to 12 month bracket of lifespan. Okay, I think Robert Kiyosaki, the rich dad, poor dad speaks about that too. He says somebody who is a millionaire but spends 100,000 per year They're not rich. They're only rich in 10 years, you know, because they're going to spend that in 10 years. He said rich depends on how long you can stay rich for based on if everything went wrong tomorrow. That is crossing the chasm. That is going from dependent to independent. Put it this way, okay? There's a lot of guys out in the world that many people will think are crushing it. They're killing it. They're making big money. You know, people, you say to somebody, I'm earning 80,000 a year. They're like, whoa, you lose your job for a year. You're in trouble. If you don't have at least four or five hundred thousand saved up, within four or five years, if you don't go and get another job with the same sort of money, but you carry on the same lifestyle, and you have a giant house that you shouldn't have really paid for, but you went for it, and a car that you've got on finance, but you're like, fuck, I could I thought I could afford it, but I can't. And you've got this woman that maybe loves to go out, loves to go on holiday, you've got two kids, and you've been funding all this shit. It looks independent. It's very dependent. At any moment that could all go fucking wrong. You know, if you, like I said, if you lost your job or if one of the kids got sick or if you got sick, like you're in big, big trouble. And as a man, most guys never cross that chasm. They never get across that bridge. Now, let's look at the other side of the coin, okay? I'll use an example. Somebody like Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor in the early days was, he told a story, okay? I'll tell you the story. I'll make it easy and then I'll link it back. I like doing this. It brings things together. It creates a picture. McGregor was somewhere on holiday, somewhere warm, and he bumped into this guy who was a billionaire. McGregor starts chatting about money, and this guy's like, McGregor said he had a yacht tan, he was like golden brown, which you only get from being out on sea, which is the reflection of the sea, I get it. He said to McGregor, you fighters are like dentists, you only make money when you're pulling teeth. And McGregor said he sat and thought about it for a while and was like, fuck, he's right. Like, I only make money when I fight, that's not good enough, I need to make money other times. He realised, okay that he wasn't as independent as he thought. You know, driving around in a nice Bentley in LA, he thought he was the man, everybody loves him. He realized that if tomorrow his he got hit by a bus and became paralyzed, his income, gone. That's not very independent, is it? You know, now he'd be dependent on the state or he'd be dependent on certain things that he had to do to get that money, okay? He'd have to then go and do interviews and other things. Like, he still has to work. He still has to worry about where the next penny's coming from or the next couple of years, okay? Not a lot of guys get to independent. McGregor did. So that's why when people say, oh, he fought Floyd Mayweather, why is he doing that? That was a that was um, a publicity stunt, etc. The amount of money he made took him from dependent to independent. Well, it might have been a few fights before that in the UFC when he got to a certain amount of money, but then he invested that money into things like whiskey. So instead of saying Dana please can you pay me for punching, Dana White's the president of the UFC, please pay me 60,000 on his first fight, everybody remembers 60 Gs, Dana, but let's say, oh, Dana, please play, pay me quarter of a million so that I can keep up with my lifestyle, my bills, and help my family, etc. He went to saying, hey, take this money, go and make my whiskey brand for me. Hey, take this money and go and make 
I think it's the Mac Life, the production company, so they can film everything for him. So he doesn't have to worry about the UFC coming along and doing all, all of his promos and marketing anymore. He's got his own marketing team. It's like an internal engine that drives his life forward. He doesn't have to worry. And that's what I've always prided myself on. And I've told you guys along the way, I will not seek investment because then you're dependent. I will not do certain things like ad revenue on YouTube because then I'm dependent on that ad revenue. And if there's there's so many kids out there, okay, who are doing TikTok strategies, like I'm going to be a millionaire off TikTok. That's great. But what happens if tomorrow all the world leaders say there's too many pedophiles on here or there's little girls, you know, dancing in hot dance, we can't have this anymore. We need to get this platform down or well, your income's gone. You know, you were too dependent. You, were, you might have been a millionaire, but you're not, not very independent. And that's what McGregor did. He created McGregor Promotions. So instead of saying, Dana, please pay me, when he fought Floyd Mayweather, he had McGregor Promotions and he was a partner in the deal. Okay? Now he's independent. Now he's making decisions for himself. Now he doesn't have a boss. So the guy who's making like 80000 a year, who thinks he's some big wig rolling around in like a nice Range Rover, he's not as independent as he thinks. Because at any moment that boss could say, fired. You know, you're dependent on that boss not to fire you. You're dependent on the company to pay you. It's a very scary position to be in. And COVID has exposed that. And very few guys make it to that independent scale. And that's why... I try and lead by example in that sense, and I try and build everything from the ground up myself. I keep 100% ownership, and if it takes me three or four years longer, I'm willing to do that in order to have that independent life on the other side, rather than saying, oh, I would invest in this, but my business partner said, says no. Like that's, that's a shit show. Always goes wrong. That's dependent on their decisions. You're dependent on someone else. It's not very nice. Crossing that chasm from dependent to independent, will give a man one hell of a fucking life. It will be unbelievable. Unbelievable. Because then you can wake up each day, make your own decisions. You're not relying on anybody else. You have freedom. You have what an old boss of mine used to say, okay? This guy was worth a couple hundred million. Probably the smartest man I've ever met in my life. Went to Harvard, Oxford, so many different schools, okay? Used to row for, I think, Oxford as well. Bit of a beast of a guy. Outlier male. 100% outlier male. One of the smartest men I've ever met. He used to say that what you need to achieve in life is fuck you money. And he used to openly tell all the employees, I want you to get to fuck you money. Well, you've got so much money that you don't need to worry about what somebody else is going to do or if there's a rule change or something happens and it affects you or your business, you're going to be okay, okay? But you can set up your business in different ways where you're always okay anyway. It's not always a monetary value. But having a certain amount of money or certain assets is fuck you money. So when people say, I have my own house, yeah, is it 100% paid off? No. Then you're still dependent, okay? Because until you get paid enough by your boss to pay that off because you're living in the house, you're still dependent on your boss to keep that asset in line. It's currently a liability. Even if you're renting it out, you're still dependent on those people to stay there. You're still dependent on that house not fucking up and having to pay 20, 30 grand in maintenance for a new boiler and the house flooded, etc. Until you actually own something outright, like a car, when people say, I've got it on finance, what happens if you crash that car? Now, I know you've got insurance, etc., but shit's going to go south pretty quickly. What happens if you lose your job and you currently can't pay for that car anymore? And now you've either got to somehow sell it or curb those payments or go into a debt management plan. That's very dependent. I don't care if you're on 100 grand a year and then you lose your job. You're still dependent until everything that you have is bought and owned and the money that's coming in is concrete and permanent. Okay, or it's such a large number that it doesn't fuck, it doesn't matter because it's fuck you money, like I said a minute ago. But there's so many guys that are relying on other people. They're relying on other, other things in their life to push everything forward. They're not independent yet. They haven't crossed that chasm. And very few men will ever cross that chasm. And it's very, very hard to achieve, naturally. You know, you look at the state of life, you need other people to begin with. But if you... If you strategize and you put puzzle pieces in place in a certain manner and you apply more patience than trying to have everything tomorrow, you can build a life that is more independent than dependent. 
like I said, with my streaming platform, I guarantee with the business model I've built and my audience, I could ring up my friend who's worth 200 million. I could ring him up tomorrow and say, do you want to invest? I could find so many different investors. I could spend every day sat here, guys, sending out 400 emails. And somebody would get back and go, fuck, let's do this. Here's two million to get started. You've already got an audience. I'm going to get some return on the money. Let's hire a film crew. But then I'm a 50% partner. Then somebody else is deciding upon the content. Then when something isn't very PC and there's a bunch of feminists shouting at us, that person is saying, pull the plug on that. I, look, I don't want that. I'm dependent on their opinion. I'm dependent on other people's money. I'm dependent on, oh, I hope the numbers come in because otherwise he or she is going to be very angry at me because they've just invested. I would rather be independent and free. It's the only way to live, guys. Cross that chasm. Go from dependent to independent. Strategize properly, okay? Cross that chasm. If you want to grab our Men's Lifestyle Supplement and Male Advantage ebook, all links are in the bio.